Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be building this super simple computer desk. The whole desk is constructed of three quarter inch plywood and solid red oak edge banding all around. So if you want to see how I did it, stick around. Let's head down to the shop and build this. First, I'll get started by breaking down the plywood. I'll cut the sides of the carcasses, the bottoms and the top and rear stretchers. You'll see me slide my rip fence back. I'll use that as a stop block, but moving it back behind the blade allows it to not bind. Once I have the pieces broken down into more manageable sizes, I can trim them to their final dimensions. I'll also use the stop block on the crosscut fence to make repeatable cuts, so everything is exactly the same. Okay, so now that I've cut all the sides, the four sides for the two carcasses of each side of the desk, now I need to cut the tops and bottoms for those carcasses and also the uh, stretchers or the cross braces that are going to support the whole thing and keep it square and stable. And then we're going to cut the top and we're going to cut all the solid wood edge banding for everything. So let's start with squaring up one edge there, rotating it, making a nice 90 degree square edge to that side, and then we can start. Uh, cutting the tops and the bottoms to fit to the dimensions I need. Now I'm going to make it 12 inches wide on each side. So I have my rip fence set up as a stop at 12 inches, but I'm going to back that rip fence up so that it's before the blade. So that'll act as a stop. And then as I come through the blade with the cut, there'll be nothing there past the blade to bind it for any kickback chance. Now I need to cut the stretchers, the three inches wide uh, by 12 inches long. They're, they're already cut to 12 inches because I set up the stop block before and cut everything when I cut the bottoms. So now what I'm gonna do to get under the fence at three inches, I'm not gonna be able, you know, to maneuver my hand in there or a push stick. So I'm gonna slide the fence off. And slide it in this way. room to get under there and set it to three inches. And then I'm just going to back it up so it doesn't bind up with the blade and the pieces will fall away. And now I have the parts for the stretchers and the bottoms of the carcasses laid out. What I'm gonna do is flip them over and mark locations of where I need the pocket screws. That's how we're gonna uh, do the joinery for this. Just, you know, quick and strong. Okay, now this saw has for plywood and sheet goods, melamines and things like that. It has a scoring blade and that prevents the tear out. So since I'm going to be cutting solid oak right now, I'm going to lower that back down into the table because I don't need it to cut the oak. And I do think that if I, you know, repeatedly cut solid woods with this, it's going to just wear it out. I'm going to have to get a new one eventually. So I think it's easier to just loosen it up and then just drop it down into the table where it's no longer in use. And it is completely out of the way and I will lock it back in place. When I cut the red oak for the edge banding and also the edge banding of the top of the desk, it will be relying on just a combination blade. I've decided to make my own shop zone uh, edge band veneer. So I'm going to use three quarter inch red oak and I'm going to cut it into thin strips, a little less than an eighth of an inch, and I'm going to glue and nail it on. I'll use this edge banding to cover off the edges of the plywood for the carcasses and the shelves.
Okay, so I have my parts laid out of my sides and what I did was mark on the top of each piece where it will be covered later on, the front and the back, and which way is the inside. The reason I do that is because in the past, when I have drilled the shelf pin holes on certain projects and I wasn't careful, I drilled them on the wrong side of the workpiece and then I had to fill those holes and you know, it's a good thing it was a painted project because it was easy to fill, but had that been something that was a, a project that was going to be stained like this one and polyurethane later on, that wouldn't have been so easy. I'm not going to go too far down with this because I don't want this to look like Swiss cheese. The shelf's not going to go all the way down. We're going to be uh, putting a computer tower in uh, one side and um, I think uh, they're putting a uh, PlayStation and Xbox and stuff on the other side. So. The bulk of it has to be pretty high. And the shelf, I think what I'll do is flush this up on the top. So you can see, this is the back. So now the back is gonna have stretchers. I don't wanna get too close to the stretchers. So what I'm going to do is use this part of the jig here. And then when I flip it around to the other side, flush that up. I'm also gonna hit it there and use the, this one I can use the back row. So. So what I'm going to do is just mark where I'm going to stop. So I think I'm going to make the shelf go up to one, two, three, four. Let's go to the sixth hole that says row B. So this is going to be the last hole that I drill. And I'm only going to make uh, three, maybe four holes. So I'm going to start here. down and I'm gonna go from here I'm gonna go up one two three four so my pattern is gonna be just from row B to the arrow and I'll look at this is the back and so I want to be further away so I'll drill my first and last hole and then do the middle ones okay so now I can flip the piece around and now this, when I look at my markings, it's the front inside, so I can get closer with the shelf pins here. So I'm gonna go again to the same markings. And that's it. And now I have my pattern for the shelf pins. Okay, so I've got the shop saw and edge banding. I'm just gonna put it off to the side like this. And like I said before, this is where it comes in handy to make your markings on, which is the front, the top, the side, the back. This way, you know exactly, you know, which way you're going to alternate everything and the side that you want to try to flush it up to. So what I'm going to do is, since this is just slightly thicker than the plywood, because the plywood never runs a true three quarters. Uh, I mean, you really, you know, you could get it to run uh, true three quarters, depending on the supplier that you buy it from. But most of the time, it's undersized at 23, 30 seconds. So what I'm going to do is overhang the edge banding slightly on both sides and then come back and flush everything up so everything is perfect and it looks like it was just meant to be there. Some three-quarter inch pin nails. This is very thin. It's about a little less than an eighth, so just a little more than a sixteenth of an inch thick. So I'll just run bead of glue so get nice even coverage with the glue if you, don't be stingy if you need more put more you don't want this to come loose over time take your piece lay it on there I'm gonna flush it up at the top it's one less piece that I have to cut with the flush trim saw Okay, so I have just a little bit of overhang after gluing in the solid edge banding. I'm just gonna take my low angle block plane and I'm just gonna run it across and just shave off just enough until I get close to the surface. And then the rest I'll take care of with the random orbital sander as I sand the whole panel and everything will be completely flush. I thought about doing this with the flush trim router, but because it's on edge like this, I would have to run the router sideways like this. 
or I would have to set up the router table with the flush trim bit. So I think this is just as fast and actually a lot less dusty. Okay, so the Wolf camera, I sanded everything down prior to assembly because it's just much easier to get the whole thing done instead of having to try to squeeze into corners and everything like that. So, okay, so now that I, like I said, I have everything sanded down, I'm gonna start the assembly process. And what I did, because I want these bottoms to sit roughly two and a half inches from the bottom and have molding go around, a base molding go around each one of the carcasses. Um, what I'm going to do is use this jig that I made out of scraps and I cut this piece to two and a half inches because that's where I want the bottom of the shelf to sit. And I screwed on a piece of three quarter inch plywood on the bottom as a hook, so, or a cleat, if you will. So what I'm gonna do with this is, I'm gonna take it, and I'm going to butt it up against the bottom, and then I'm going to clamp it in place while I'm putting some pressure on it, clamp it to the workpiece, and now I know that this is not going to move when I drop my piece in. Now, I'm gonna butt this up against the front here so that it's flush. And I left a little extra room in the back here because we're not sure if uh, we're gonna put a back on this computer desk yet or we're gonna just leave it with the, uh, the rear stretchers and open so that not only for heat dissipation but also just to run any wires through and anything like that. So when you see this little uh, quarter inch reveal here, that's just so that we can always add quarter inch plywood to the back later on. So once I have that set, now I know my shelf is gonna be lined up perfectly there for the base. I'm just gonna run small amount of glue. I don't have to run a lot here because the, the screws will hold together so you really you know, you don't need too much. So just a thin bead, just not to have to get any crazy amount to squeeze out, clean up. And then I marked where my front's gonna be and I'm going to butt it up against the jig that I made and then I'm gonna drop it in place. Use my hand to flush it up to the front to hold it in place while I screw it down just so it doesn't walk away on me. I'll drive a screw on this side, then I'll move it over to the rear and install that one. I'm still gonna maintain pressure as I screw it in. I have the clutch set way down to eight on my drill driver. Now I'm going to take this off. I'm gonna move this right angle clamp over to this side. And while I'm pulling it against the jig to keep it strictly where I need it to be, I'll install it right angle in here. Get a couple more screws. Next I'll cross cut the red oak for the base trim and then I'll rip it down to the size I need. Next I'll angle the blade to 45 degrees and try to test the limitations of this saw. I'm going to cut 45 degree corners so that I can miter it around the edges of the carcass. Now I'll apply some glue to each one of the miters and I'll use miter spring clamps to hold them in place while I pin nail them. And I will have a link to these tools in uh, the description below the video with the Amazon link. Okay, so now I'm joining the front with the pocket screws from underneath. I pin nailed it in place and then I'm going to put screws on the side from the inside to hold but I'm using the fine thread one and a quarter inch pocket screws because I am drilling into red oak. Next, with both carcasses standing at a distance that I need them to be, I'll install the rear stretcher stabilizer. Then I'll install the front stabilizer.
Okay, so I checked the diagonal and the case is completely square. This uh, stretcher brace will not only give a little support to the top, it will also keep everything completely square the way it is and stabilize it so that when it moves, it doesn't want to bow out and separate since there's nothing holding the bottom. Once the top is installed, the whole thing becomes one solid unit. And now I'll cut the top, which is going to be plywood and then red oak edge banding mitered all around it. Now I'm trimming out the top around the edges with three quarter inch red oak and I'm going to be cutting it. It's already ripped to one and a half inches thick. That's going to cover both of the pieces of plywood that's holding the desk together and give me a nice solid looking thick top. But I rolled in the miter saw station temporarily because it's just much easier and more accurate to cut these corners, I think, than to do it on the table saw. There's a lot of trial and error with trying to actually, you know, get that blade right up to that line. And now to join the edge banding to the top, I'm going to use pocket screws and glue. And since the pocket screws are on the underneath of the top side, they'll be completely covered by the carcasses, so you'll never see the holes. Now we're in the home stretch here. I'm going to apply a coat of walnut stain, and that's to match the existing furniture in the room. And then I'll attach the top, and then I'm going to spray three coats of a satin polyurethane. Okay guys, so here's a quick shot of it in place. My son has everything set up. I'll show some photos at the end where he has everything turned on, but super simple design right here. Just a shelf on both sides, adjustable. Got his computer chair. Fits right in there. Nice and comfortable. And that's it. I think this project turned out great. All right, let's head back down to the shop. Okay guys, well that's it for this week's video. I hope everybody enjoyed the build. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That'll notify you every time I upload a video. Usually on a bi-weekly basis, things are getting real busy around here, so it's getting kind of hard to upload. So um, also, if you're interested in any of the tools that you see me use in this video, I will put my Amazon affiliate link down in the description below so that you can get those tools through my link and that will help support the channel. You're not gonna pay any extra, you're gonna pay the regular price of the tools, but I will get a little portion of that proceeds to go to this channel through that link. So if you do have to buy any of those tools, make sure you hit that link and purchase them through that. Okay, also I'm getting a lot of questions and comments about the new table saw and trust me, I have a video that's gonna be coming up where I'm gonna talk all about it, the reasons I decided to go with the sliding table saw and the benefits and whether or not, you know, I like the saw as of right now. Um, I did use it for two builds already and um, we're gonna go into a great room depth in the next video. This one's getting kind of long, so I'm not gonna ramble on. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check the Amazon affiliate links below and I will see you next time in my shop. Thanks for joining me.